And so now we could take a look at some more um, interesting, sophisticated examples. This is what you will also do tomorrow in the exercise, um, looking at combined circuits. So for example, if we have a circuit like this, we have two resistors in series, we have another resistor in parallel, and then we also have a last resistor in parallel, and we are looking for the equivalent resistance. So what would you do? How would you calculate this? Exactly. Then so we, we calculate some equivalent resistance here. Yeah, then, uh, the sum with R3 is in parallel. And the last one in parallel, as, as I've already more or less mentioned. Yeah? So um, we just combine this application and say, okay, we, 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 take the, we take the sum of these two, and then we take this in parallel to R4, uh, R3, and then the remaining one in parallel to R4. And if we if you write down if you insert this then the equation gets longer and longer and you can try to simplify this a little bit but usually at the end at the end of such a calculation you get a very long equation and you can do your life much easier if you have values and if you insert the values as early as possible because if you calculate this here you just get a new number you put in a new number and unit here calculate the parallel resistance you get a new number you calculate the next parallel resistance, you get a new number. So something like this here only needs to be done if you don't know the values, for example. If you want to have a general equation, what would be the total equivalent resistance, uh, for example, of such a circuit? Okay. Um, yeah, so in this case, you end up with an equation like this. Um, and so if you do such calculations, the parallel operation is always done before the plus operation. So um, this is like a multiplication and multiplication is done before doing a sum. Yeah, but here we only have multiplication. So in, in, in this case, the, uh, the order also does not really matter. And um, even if this now sounds very promising, um, there, there will be circuits and there will be networks that cannot be purely broken down into series and parallel connections. And an example is this one here. So we have two resistors here on top, two resistors at the bottom. And unfortunately, we have this resistor here in the center. And because of, if we would not have this resistor, then of course, they would be in series. They would be in series and these two branches would be in parallel. Um, but because of this one, they are not in series anymore. Because remember what we said, if resistors are connected in series, what, is there, what, what condition do we have for the current? There's the same, same current going through these resistors. And it, it must not necessarily be the same anymore because there can be some current flowing away here from this node or flowing towards this node. And so they are definitely not in series anymore. And so if we would say, okay, if, if this would be a short circuit, then we could say, okay, this one and this one, they would be in parallel because they, have the, they would have the same voltage drop and they would be in parallel because they have the same voltage drop. But if this is not the short circuit here in the center, but this general R5 resistance, uh, then yeah, we might have, a, and we will have a different voltage drop here and there or here and there. So even if they look like they are connected in parallel, they are not connected in parallel anymore. And even if they look like they are connected in series, they are not connected in series. So it's a circuit where no resistor is connected in parallel or in series to any other resistor. So you cannot use the laws that we learned so far for parallel and series connection to calculate the equivalent resistance between these two ports A and B. So, what do we do now? Yeah, so we can always fall back to, to the more general uh, laws that we have learned, and this is Kirchhoff's voltage and current law, um, and, and still, of course, Ohm's law, and write down, for example, a Kirchhoff's voltage law here, a Kirchhoff's voltage law there, a Kirchhoff's current law here and there, or maybe here and there, 
And so we could write down lots of equations and somehow um, calculate all currents and voltages. And if we have all currents and voltages, at the end we could also calculate what is the total equivalent resistance between them. So there, there, so this would be a very general solution. So what we could also use is a delta star transformation or star delta transformation. Uh, so we will talk about this later, but just to give you the idea, we could uh, we could say that these three or let me let me copy this um, so because then I can um, draw it or paste it into my drawing program so let's copy the circuit and have a new new page here so if I paste it there um, what we could do is if I take one of these pens here, we could say this is, for example, a star of resistors, right? Three, it's, it's not really looking like a nice star, but it's three resistors that are connected to a joint node. And we have an outer node here, there, and there. So we have three ports and three resistors connected like a star. And now this star delta transformation tells us we could rewrite this as or redraw this as one resistor in this direction. Um, connecting these two ports, one resistor in this direction. Connecting these two ports and one resistor here on the top in this direction, connecting these three, uh, these two ports. So from the um, yeah, and excuse me that I've drawn another, that I've drawn the German resistance symbol, but okay. Um, this is also a resistor, this is also a resistor, this is also a resistor. We have transformed this star into a triangle or into a delta connection. And so now it's very easy because these two are obviously in parallel. These two are obviously in parallel. These two branches are connected in series and then this one is also in parallel. So now it can be done with pure um, series and parallel connections. And another way would be, let me take a different color. So we would assume that this is some delta connection. Yeah, it does not really look delta, but we have one port here, one port there, one port there, or one terminal there. So three terminals and three resistors connected in, in a triangle, in a delta connection. And so now what we could do is transform this into a star. So I have one resistor here, one joint node in the center, one resistor over here, and one resistor over here. And transform this delta into a star. And now, once again, it's very, it's, it's much simpler to calculate the, the total resistance because this resistor and this resistor, they will for sure be in series. This and this one, they will be in series. These two branches will be in parallel and then this one is in series once again. So uh, qu quite nice and easy to do this. And the last idea is to use yeah, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law, some nice way of circuit calculation, for example, nodal voltage analysis. And this is what we will do later on. But let's say um, this would be the motivation to think about such rules later on, because there are circuits where pure series and parallel connection will not help you.